Oh, great. The camera flipped over. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Abounding Faith Today's Midday Praise Break. And I'm just going to give um, viewers a few moments to jump on. Thank you so much to those of you who are watching live and also those of you who are going to be watching on the replay. I know that uh, quite a few of you watch it and I actually save the videos on Abounding Faith's YouTube channel. So if you miss one, feel free to go check it out um, on my YouTube channel. So thank you again for taking this time out of your busy day, out of your busy week, out of your busy schedule uh, to just take a moment and praise God. That's what this is. This is Abounding Faith Today's Midday Praise Break. I'm Nancy. I'm a writer. I'm a speaker. I'm a life coach, an evangelist, and an encourager at heart. And I just want you to take a moment even now and... Um, Think about all that you're praising God for. Maybe you're having a rough week, a rough day, maybe a rough month, uh, but there's always something to be grateful for and to praise God. So why don't you take a moment and maybe even if you're at home or someplace private, go ahead and thank them out loud or maybe just quietly or hey, go ahead and shout it out if you want. But praise God, he has brought us through another half of the week and another day half of the day as well. Depending on where you, when you watch this also, uh, you may be watching it later on, but just praise God despite the circumstances, whatever you're going through. I know that there's no perfect um, story, there's no perfect week, there's no perfect day, but there's always something to be grateful for. Amen? And if you're watching this live and you um, are on Periscope or Twitter and you hear something uh, that I say that you like, then go ahead and tap on the screen and I'll see those hearts and I'll know that I'm not talking to myself. And if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, then go ahead and press like, leave a comment. Just let me know that you were blessed if you were blessed, okay? Amen. So this week I am celebrating the first anniversary of my first book, Waiting on God Well. Ta-da! Here it is. <laughs> Waiting on God Well, How to Prevent Breaking Down on Your Way to Your Breakthrough. And how many of you are waiting on God for something? Uh, it seems like we're all waiting on God for something in some area of our life. And I love... Um, the feedback that I'm getting from my readers, and it's on Amazon if you'd like to get it, if you haven't already gotten a copy, and um, they're, they're waiting for God on many different things. They're waiting for a new job, they're waiting for um, their loved one to come to the Lord, they're waiting to meet their spouse, they're waiting for um, healing in their body, and so this book really is for, for any situation because um, it's not a matter of if we're going to wait, it's about how we're going to wait. And I like to just uh, show the differences, which is you can either um, murmur, grumble, complain, get angry and bitter and run away from God during those waiting seasons, or you could be grateful and praise God and draw closer to Him. And so I'd like to share with you today just one of the first things that I learned during a very painful and long season of waiting and waiting in different areas of my life and I'm still waiting so you know um, this book still ministers to me but um, one of the first things that I learned uh, one of the first keys really is that you know I would go to the Lord I'm like oh my goodness Lord I want to do so much for you and I want to do this and I want to do that and how come I can't do this and how come I can't do that and I just felt like the Lord was saying to be still and to abide in him and I know for lots of us, we we get pulled in many different directions, and it's not always easy to hear, be still. And even when you hear the word wait, I mean, I have to say that that's a four-letter word that I don't like to hear very often. And not so much because I'm impatient, you know, waiting online, but just when you have like these dreams, desires, and goals, and promises that you feel that God's given to you directly and through his Bible, um, you kind of wonder, so what do I do in the waiting, right? Like, does that mean that I just don't do anything? And when you say, like, be still, what does that mean? And to abide in Christ. And so today I just want to share um, a part of Scripture that is so near and dear to my heart. So hopefully I can flip the camera and I will show you John 15. Okay, so bear with me for a moment as I tap the screen. Okay. And I'm looking at the NIV, and I love John 15 because I can just hear Jesus speaking. And you'll see that it's all in red letters because that's what Jesus was saying to his disciples. And this is right before he uh, is arrested and goes to the cross. Um, and so I'm going to be reading 
John 15, starting at verse, ooh, I can't see one second, uh, verse 5. So this is Jesus speaking to his disciples, but also to you, even now. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. Wow, that is so powerful. There's so much, even in just that that section. What I love is that Jesus is saying, basically, like, apart from me, you can do nothing. And he's saying, yeah, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And he's saying that if we remain in him, and in him, that we can ask whatever, according to his will, of course, and he, he will answer. And so I love that because Jesus wants a relationship with us. Imagine if you only spoke to, to your loved one once a year or once a week. Um, that relationship wouldn't be very strong, would it? And imagine if you ate only one meal per week. Right, And that's sometimes what we do when we only go to church one hour um, every Sunday or two hours or whatever it is. God bless you for going, yes, and keep going. But Jesus wants to hear from you every day of the week, every hour. Um, imagine he's closer than your closest friend. He loves you more than um, your family members do. Um, so he wants us to spend time with him. And so what does that look like? Um, that includes reading the Bible, prayerfully reading the Bible. It includes uh, being still and being quiet and listening to what God is saying. It means worshiping out loud or silently. It means crying. It means laughing. It means writing your thoughts down. Really, um, it means a variety of different things. And some people like to start in the morning. Some people take their lunch break and spend time with the Lord. And some people love to read the, the night owls who love to spend time with the Lord um, at the end of the day, you know, um, Jesus just wants to hear from you. And here, here he's saying, like, abide in me. And uh, a modern example that I like to use is uh, so many of us, we understand what it's like when we have a cell phone and it only has one or two bars left. What does that mean? That means that you're searching around to look for where you can get plugged in and uh, get your batteries recharged, right? Because you know that you're not going to be able to last on two bars with your cell phone for more than a few minutes, maybe an hour, um, you're not going to be able to go very far um, unless you don't care about your uh, cell phone being dead and being disconnected from the, the rest of the world. <laughs> um, but um, so in a modern day example, what do you do? You go and you go to the source and you get connected and you don't let your cell phone die, right? No way. So it's the same thing with the Bible. Like if you've gone weeks or days uh, without reading your Bible, or some of us even years, right? There, there was a time when I had my Bible on my shelf collecting dust and I would only read it if I had uh, homework for religion class or something. So I understand. And that's why I encourage you that if you are not daily in your word, then I encourage you to get started. Start with the Psalms, start with Proverbs, start with the Gospel of John, start somewhere and uh, start with Genesis if you'd like. That's the the beginning of the Bible. And uh, really just ask the Lord to speak to you and he will. That's his heart. You just heard it from Jesus right there. He was telling his disciples to remain in me and that apart from me, you, you can do nothing. And yet, as Philippians 4.13 reminds us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So I love it. So um, I hope this encouraged you. And again, um, this is just one of the, the things that I cover in my book, Waiting on God Well, How to Prevent Breaking Down on Your Way to Your Breakthrough. And uh, you can get that on Amazon. You can also go to aboundingfaith.com. That's my website. And you can find out more about me and also about my book. And I'll have exciting news for you next time. But I hope that these... Moments of uh, midday praise break are blessing you. If so, please let me know. And I do continue to, um, I do plan to continue uh, next week. So I hope to see you next week, 1230 on Wednesday. And that's Eastern Standard Time. That's the live broadcast. And then you can also catch it on the replay. So thank you so much. It's been a, a joy to spend time with you. And of course, I'm going to pray for you. 
So Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for each person who's watching live or on the broadcast. I pray that you would reveal yourself to them in a mighty way and that you would show them how much you love them, Lord, and that you want them to remain connected in you, that you don't want them to run away from you. You want to have a close and personal relationship for, with each person. You love them, Father. So I thank you. I pray that they would feel your love, that they would feel drawn to you, Father, that you would draw them with cords of love, and that they would just... Um, Feel your presence even as they're reading their Bible, Father. Give them a heart and a desire to spend time with you, Father, in prayer and reading their word, your word. I thank you and I ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.